Uh, good afternoon. I would like to look with you now at the fourth game of the June 1991 LSAT. So we are finishing our first full games section. Again, this is the fourth game. If you can find a copy yourself somewhere or purchase a copy or whatever, then you can work this along with me. Um, because the other three games, two of them were relatively straightforward order games, and the, the third game, which was actually the second that we did, um, was a grouping game that was, I would say, moderately difficult. I'm expecting this game to be somewhat difficult. A typical section would have maybe, you know, one or two easy to relatively straightforward kinds of games, and then one or two that give you some difficulty. So we've seen two pretty straightforward ones so far, so I'm just gonna expect this one will be a little bit harder. So it is of course possible that actually this game will be quite easy, and what that would mean is that overall this was kind of an easy game section. And you might think that's to your advantage. Because of the nature of the way the test is scored, and how your score is at least somewhat relatively determined on a bell curve compared to the students who are taking that same test administration, it's actually to your advantage that the game section be pretty much as hard as possible. And I know that might sound strange, the reason being, you're obviously someone who is preparing for the test, because you're here watching YouTube videos about LSAT games. Someone who's just coming in without having done any preparation, on an easier game section, they're going to do pretty well. Presumably, you're going to do even better than they are, and so you're still coming out okay, but imagine the opposite. Think about a really hard game section. You might miss a few questions more than you normally would, but you've got your pacing set. You've studied what you've studied. You know the different game types. You're ready to go. That person who hasn't spent any time doing those things, they're gonna get way more questions wrong than they would normally on just your average game section. So comparatively speaking, even though you might miss more on a harder game section, it is gonna be better for you overall. Of course, we can't control any of that in the midst of the section. You can only work the games as they come up. So there's not too much reason to spend time thinking about that during the section. But if you get to the end of the section or the end of the test and you start to reflect on that and you're like, wow, that felt really hard, that is actually to your advantage. In any case, I think that's enough intro. Let's go ahead and jump in here. We've got questions 19 through 24. Again, this is the fourth game of the second section of the June 1991 LSAT. A railway company has exactly three lines, line one, line two, and line three. The company prints three sets of tickets for January and three sets of tickets for February, one set for each of its lines for each of the two months. The company's tickets are printed in a manner consistent with the following conditions. Um, so I think the best setup here will be one that almost looks like an order setup, although I don't think this is an order game. We're not really arranging the sets of tickets. Instead, as we'll see in a second, yeah, it's something about the coloring on the tickets. Uh, you'll notice this game is a little bit strange in that the elements we're going to place into our spaces don't actually appear until we read that first clue. So it kind of looks like an order setup, but really we're just going to be placing these different colors. We do have this kind of two-dimensional aspect where we've got January and February tickets or printings for each one of the lines. And so we'll just do January on top and February on bottom. Uh, let's Let's go ahead and jump into the clues. Each of the six sets of tickets is exactly one of the following colors. Green, purple, red, and yellow. So again, we're getting our elements, they just happen to be coming in the first clue instead of in the setup. For each line, the January tickets are a different color than the February tickets. So what that means is that if I've used green for January, I can't also use it for February and vice versa. So I'll never see green over green, purple over purple, red over red, or yellow over yellow. For each month, tickets for different lines are in different colors. For each month, tickets for different lines are in different colors. So I think that means we can only use each color once on top and bottom. I'm just gonna jot down, there's not a great way I think to symbolize this. I'm just gonna say, <laughs> no colors more than once. And again, that's gonna be true on top and bottom. Uh, we don't love it when we just have to kind of write a note down because the whole point of symbolizing clues is that we don't have to refer back to words. Uh, but again, in this case, I'm not really thinking of a great way to symbolize that clue. Um, let's see, we've done each of those first three. Exactly one set of January tickets is red. Okay, so simple enough, we will use red somewhere on top. For line three, either the January tickets or the February tickets, but not both, are green. So we're gonna have to use green 
somewhere for line three. The January tickets for line two are purple. Okay, favorite kind of clue. We can just put that right on the diagram. January tickets for line two are purple. No February tickets are purple. Okay, so we never use February, uh, or we never use purple tickets for February. What about our deductions? What can we figure out? Well, sticking with purple for a second, if we can't use the colors more than once, line one also can't be purple in January, and also can't be, um, line three also can't be purple in January. So actually, purple is done, right? We're not gonna use purple anymore. It only appears as the January line two color. What else can we say here? Uh, I guess we could go ahead and say the red will either be uh, line one for January or line three for January, because it said we have to use that somewhere on the top uh, in January. I guess we could also go ahead and say that for February, since we can't use purple, it's gonna be some arrangement of green, red, and yellow. We just don't know how they're gonna be arranged on the bottom of this diagram. And I believe that's it. I'm not seeing any other deductions. And again, as always, there may be other deductions, but deductions are simply natural consequences of the rules. So as long as we're following the rules, anything that would have been a deduction will come up for us anyway. Let's go ahead and jump into the questions. I'm looking at number 19 here. Uh, I'm always hoping that that first question is one of the complete and accurate style questions, which one of the following could be a complete and accurate list of whatever, because I can just use the rules one at a time to cross off answer choices till I come up with an answer. Can't do that here, because number 19 is just a standard specific style question. If the line three tickets for January are red, which one of the following statements must be true? So let's carry down what we know, which is of course that line two January is purple. And then for this particular question, line three January is red. So that's gotta be red. And then what must be true? Well, what else can we figure out here? We could go ahead and say, remember for line three, something has to be green. So we're gonna have to put February line three as green. That means that line two, of course, we know can never be purple. Now it also cannot be green. So can we tell between red and yellow? I don't think so it's either red or yellow but I don't think we can tell which one and then we know again that line one is not purple so it would just flip it would be the the coin flip from whatever line two February is now as far as line one January goes we've already used red I think it could be green or yellow I'm not seeing a particular reason. Yeah, it can be green or yellow as far as I can tell. So that's what I'm gonna jot down. All right, this is a must be true. So let's see, line one tickets for January are green. No, not necessarily. Line one tickets for January are yellow. Again, that's possible, that's a could be true, but it's not a must be true. The line one tickets for February are red. Uh, it's possible, but again, not a must be. The line two tickets for February are yellow. Uh, again, possible, but not a must be. Has to be E. Again, you wanna resist the temptation to read it, but if you read it, you can see the line three tickets for February are green, and yes, that's the one thing that we figured out there. All right, let's go ahead and work on number 20. Uh, I've already brought down what we know. If one set of the line two tickets is green, which one of the following statements must be true? Well, since we know that January for line two is already purple, then that means that has to be green. And then from there, well, we know that line three February could not be green, we can't use them again. So that means that green is gonna have to go in that line three January slot. Of course, we also know line one can never be purple, can't be green right now. I was about to say could be red or yellow, but I can see now, remember, red is gonna have to get used once for January. So the only place that can happen right now is line one, which means that line two, no, I'm sorry, line one February has to be yellow, that's the only thing left over, and that means that red is going to be line three February. So I think we can figure this one out exactly. Uh, let's see, what must be true? The line one tickets for January are red? Y yes, yeah. There it is, okay, circle A and move on. Let's go ahead and take a look at, let's see, 21 and 22 general questions. 23, a must be true except. So remember, this is really the same thing as a could be false. If the line three tickets for February are yellow, uh, each of the following statements must be true except. Again, could be false. Well, we know green has to go somewhere for line three, so that's gonna have to be January. We know red has to go somewhere for January, so again, that's gonna have to be line one 
1. We know purple can't go anywhere, so this can't be purple, this can't be red, of course this can't be purple. I think it's just gonna be, can't be purple, can't be red, can't be yellow, because we've already used yellow, so actually this has to be green, and the only thing left over is red. Again, we're always trying to use green, red, and yellow for February. All right, so could be false. One set of January tickets is green. True or not? So I'm gonna cross off all the must be trues. One set of January tickets are green. That's true, so I'm gonna cross off A. Um, oh wait, January tickets. <laughs> Gosh, one set of January tickets are green. That's true, so I'm still gonna cross off A. One set of line one tickets is red, also true, cross off B. One set of line two tickets is red, yep. The tickets in two of the six sets are red, that is also true, should be E. Circle E and let's move on. Uh, 24, suppose that none of the tickets are purple. Okay, so this is changing the rules. We're gonna save this for later. Let's go ahead and go back to the general questions. Which one of the following statements could be true? So I'm looking at 21, our general questions, we always wanna try and answer either from the deductions we came up with at the beginning of the game, or or from the various scenarios that we've worked out, especially for something like a could be true, because that's just looking for a possibility. So if we've seen that at least once, that's the answer. Uh, no January ticket is green. Yeah, I think that's the answer. Unless I'm missing something, on 19 it could have been yellow. Oh wait, no January ticket? Oh gosh, I keep doing that on this game. This game is hard to keep track of vertically versus horizontally, which makes me think maybe I set it up with a less than ideal setup. Like maybe it would make better sense to have January, February, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, three slots in each. At this point though, obviously we're not gonna figure that out. And if it had been easier, I mean, it's too late, right? No January ticket is green. Again, number 19, I think that was possible. Could have been yellow there, but not necessarily green. So that should be the answer. Number 22, which one of the following statements could be true? Uh, again, we'll either use previous situations or our deductions. Both the line one tickets for January and the line two tickets for February are green. So did we ever see green, green here? Why? We haven't seen it. That doesn't mean it's impossible, so I'm not gonna cross it off. Um, both the line one tickets for January and the line two tickets for February are yellow. Line one tickets for January and line two tickets are yellow. Now that was possible, specifically right here, I think we had line one in January yellow and line two in February also yellow. So that should be correct. Let's jot that down just to make sure. Can we do yellow? That would have had to be red in that case. Purple and yellow, red and green. Red we've used at least once. Purple's in the right position. Green we've used at least once. I'm not seeing any problems with that. I'm pretty sure that's the answer. Okay, let's move on to the complex question. Suppose that none of the ticket sets are purple. If all of the other conditions remain the same, which of the following statements could be true? We're just gonna have to set this up and kind of see what works and what doesn't. We just wanna make sure that we do not use purple anywhere in this case. Um, we still need G somewhere, top or bottom. We still need R somewhere once across the top, we don't know where. None of the January tickets are green. Well, if we're already not using purple and we're not repeating any colors, it would be impossible to use just red and yellow across those three lines. So no, that can't work. None of the February tickets are green. Same exact reasoning, that's not possible. None of the line two tickets are green. So can we make it to where none of the line two tickets are green? Do we have any setup that's kind of like that? Take a look at number 23. If we put red and green in line one, but yellow and red in line two, and then green and yellow. So I'm just switching out the purple there. Does that break any rules? We've got GRY across the bottom. G is used once, R is used once on top, G is used once in line three. I think that's it, none of the line two tickets are green. I think that's the one, yeah, so that's C. All right, moment of truth. Uh, we've got E, A, A, B, E, and C. E, A, A, B, E, C. E, A, A, B, E, C. Awesome, we did it, got them all right. I would say, I mean, it was definitely not one of the easiest two. The first and third, the order games, were definitely the easiest. I feel like that was harder than 8 through 13 as well. So I think we chose wisely there to save that for the end. Now, of course, I'm just doing them in order anyway. But if we had been doing them in order in this case, I think 1, 2, 3, 4 would have been okay. 1, 3, 2, 4 probably would have been even better. It's pretty important to make sure that you're doing 
at least the two easiest games, first and second. Pacing can be difficult, you want to bank as many points as possible, and as the games get harder, you might just want to pick off a few questions rather than try and work through the whole game. So on, in that case, I don't think the specific questions were terribly difficult. It was really just those last two, the general question and the complex question, that ended up taking a bit of extra time. So there it is. First four games done. Prep test uh, one from June 1991. All done. Planning to work through all the others, so if that was helpful to you, be sure to like this video and subscribe. I kind of have a schedule in mind now. I'm going to try and do these every Tuesday and Thursday for a while. Maybe have some weekend editions. Because um, I'd like to be able to get through them, you know, not over five years or something. Maybe over a year or two. Uh, but that's the plan. We'll see how that goes. If there is something else I can do to help you out, you be sure to let me know. And otherwise, have a good weekend.